Welcome, everybody, to the Kona Shame Veterinary Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Andy Work. Guys, I got a good one for you today. I am talking about the cost of having a pet. Uh, this is a topic that I think is super important. I think we need to be more upfront about what it really costs to have a pet uh, so that pet owners have realistic expectations going in. I don't think any of us like surprising pet owners with what it costs, but um, but the only way to avoid that is for them to have that knowledge, uh, hopefully before we come into hard money conversations. So that is what uh, that is what I aspire to. That's what I would like to see more of is a more open dialogue about what pet ownership really costs. Uh, Care Credit and their parent company, Synchrony, have released the results from a survey that they did. It's 1,200 pet owners talking about what does it really cost to have a dog or cat for the life of that pet. That is what we are breaking down today. It's me and Jonathan Weinberg, who is the general manager and senior VP for uh, Synchrony, which is uh, Care Credit and Pets Best uh, Pet Insurance. So anyway, Good episode, good insight, really thoughtful discussion. Guys, let's get into this. This episode of the Kona Shame Veterinary Podcast is made possible ad-free by Care Credit. This is your show. We're glad you're here. We want to help you in your veterinary career. Welcome to the Cone of Shame with Dr. Andy Rourke. Welcome to the podcast, Jonathan Weinberg. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Uh, for those who don't know you, you are the general manager, senior vice president of PET for uh, Synchrony, which is a company that over is over uh, care credit, which pretty much everybody in the vet profession knows, and also Pets Best Pet Insurance. So you guys, uh, you do a lot of things with the financial side of money. And so I was thrilled to be able to have you on the podcast. Yeah, great. Great to be here. You know, Synchrony is a, a large financial institution. We're actually a bank and uh, we specialize in consumer finance. And one of our divisions is Synchrony Health and Wellness, uh, which uh, is really uh, the part of the business that Care Credit resides in. And like you said, everyone knows uh, Care Credit in the veterinary profession and, and uh you know, Care Credit is really the largest elective healthcare uh, solution for for consumers in the U.S. And um, just over three years ago, um, we made the decision to um, expand our veterinary finance uh, specialty by purchasing Pets Best. And so, it's been just over three years, and it's been a great acquisition and uh, shows our commitment to this space. Yeah, you guys are really kind of leading the way in helping pet owners uh, afford pet care, really, when we when we talk about, you know, when we talk about what options are out there and, and what support there are for them, um, you guys are kind of, uh, you're, you're, you're a 800 pound gorilla in that space, which is, which is good. It's, it's an important space. Yeah, listen, I think we've been in this business a long time. Care Credit is celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. And we've been in the veterinary space for approximately 27 years. And so, when you've been around that long, um, you know, people know you and trust you for generations, whether it be someone who's been caring for their pet and using their card over the course of a lifetime of their, uh, you know, pet family members, uh, or for that matter, if it, or, or if it's their first time and or, or over the various lives of your of your pets. Um, and then I think the other thing is we're a work hard that is not just limited to the veterinary channel, right? You can use it for human health as well. And so it's very often that someone takes out care credit for perhaps something in the dentistry field, like orthodontistry for your child. And then you find out, oh, this also works in the vet channel. And so you have that cross utility. And so that has enabled us to build a, a good business. And and in my, uh, in my case, uh, provide a, a great alternative um, for helping pet parents uh, afford some of those um, some of those costs that come along in the veterinary channel. Uh, I want to get into some research that you guys put out earlier this year. And uh, you guys have a study, and it was on uh, pet owner spending. And the title is, uh, Synchrony Study Reveals Pet Owners Spend As Much As 55000 During a Pet's Lifetime. And I, I want to talk to you about this because the study itself is is really interesting. Um, I, I want to lay down the methodology you guys use because I think it's I think it's really well done. I think the findings I was 
I was surprised by the findings, uh, to be honest. Uh, and like they, they make sense to me. But even I was sort of backed up a little bit by... Um, by the numbers that you guys put down, I was, I was, I've been thinking a lot about this because, you know, we're seeing changes in vet medicine and we've got, uh, we've got a lot of student debt for veterinarians and we're seeing veterinarian salaries rising, which is good. And we're seeing technician support staff salaries rising, which is good. And it needs to happen, but you can't look at those things and not also look at where's this money sort of come from and what does this ultimately mean and kind of look down the chain at the pet owner and think, what is, what is, care for or what is what is affordability and access to vet medicine look like and that's been a headspace that i've been playing in a lot i i don't i don't think pet owners largely have an idea of what the financial commitment is to having a pet and i think that as medicine costs go up and and food costs go up and 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 inflation and all those sorts of things i i think that's less and less true i was playing around with my own dog and he's he's a three-year-old totally healthy dog and I started running the numbers and I was like, you know, if I just did the basic wellness care on him and nothing bad happened to him, no hot spots, no, you know, no allergy stuff, no ear infections, nothing, just basic uh, parasiticides. Um, it just if I said grocery store dog food, I, I'm still at a thousand dollars plus in maintaining a goofy, totally healthy dog. And I, I don't think that people people recognize that. Do you agree? Oh, I, I absolutely agree. I think, you know, the study which we commissioned, which we which we called the lifetime of care, because that's what we're trying to ascertain is what is what does that cost? And I think I think there's there's several points you hit on which which make a ton of sense. I think the first thing is like you, you know, as an expert in this field, right? And someone who's in the profession, yourself, you don't realize uh, what you're spending yeah. because you don't look at it in, in a one bite sample, even if you had a, a dog that required or a pet that required, uh, you know, maybe more care and more medical care than, than, than the average, it's, it's done in chunks. So, you know, right. you, you don't realize how it adds up. And then you see this number that we came up with, that, that we came up with, that we surveyed 1,200 pet owners and 100 veterinarians, right, is, is as much as $55,000. And that's a, that's a really big number. And um, because, it's not all in one shot, um, number one. Number two, to your point, that saying that most people don't realize it, our study um, showed that nearly half of pet parents underestimate that cost of what you're going to be spending on your pet. And so um, you you can really see that you're not alone and and I, I, and, and, and you're probably on the uh, higher echelon of, of, of people that you know, understand this profession, understand the costs. I agree with you 100%. Um, there's, there's a major uh, issue with veterinarians and, and student debt and, and with vet techs. And, and it's great to see that, you know, hopefully not the debt going up, but the salaries going up and the, their ability to, to manage that. That's a, that's a, that's a problem in, 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 our, in our profession. Um, and it's hard because, you know, better than me as, as someone, you know, really deeply into the profession, the passion that people have for this and, and, yeah. and the choices that you make. But what I'd say is that the vet industry is no different than things we're seeing across um, the economy now, and we're seeing inflation. And there's a lot of right. inflation in the cost of care uh, for the animals, some of it to make up perhaps for uh, the human resources costs, but a lot of it other also has to do with the demand that veterinarians are under with so many more people having pets. And, um, you know, the ability, you know, the, really, it's the competition numbers. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. So so let's let's lay down some numbers here. The 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 lifetime mm -hmm. cost of care, according to the survey, comes down to 20 to fifty five thousand dollars for dogs and fifteen thousand to forty five thousand dollars for cats. Um, and, uh, and I thought it was also really fascinating looking at just the first year of life, um, 1300 to 2800 for dog owners and, um, and, uh, 90, 960 to $2,500 for cat owners in the first year alone. Yeah. And, and that's the first year. And, and I think what, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, in the first year, you're going to have startup costs, right? I think everyone kind of understands that and, and is prepared to some yeah. degree, but it's the it's the stuff that 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 comes later and even no startup costs are more than you think right you know just a acquiring a dog and these are the things that you capture so yes the 
the, the you know the first year expense is obviously you know getting getting the pet vaccinating it if it's, if it's uh, home proofing it training it etc those are those, those are big but when you start thinking about some of these annual costs they add up very quickly yeah yeah i um i see a lot of frustration from i see frustration from veterinarians about financial conversations right because these are not fun conversations and and pet owners get emotional about them i i see a lot of frustration from from pet owners i was i saw a uh a, an interaction on on the internet today and social media is a is a, is a cesspool but but <laughs> but i was looking at and some somewhat someone had posted and and said uh, you know how dare these veterinarians charge this charge this money for my pet and they couldn't do it and someone else had written back and said it's not their responsibility to pay for your pet like you you had a responsibility when you took this pet and i i I don't i don't endorse communicating that way online at all i i do understand the sentiment of both parties you know both the person who's like i was surprised i didn't have the money and this is heartbreaking i'm upset and i also understand the pushback from the veterinary professional who was like hey man we we deal with this all day, every day, and we don't have the resources to just take care of this and absorb the costs ourselves, even though we would love to. You have some responsibility here as well. Yeah, no, that is absolutely right. And that's why, you know, with this study and with the, you know, kind of financial solutions that we have out in the market, we think it addresses both things. Number one, the study of a lifetime of care is to really educate prospective pet er parents about what they can expect in in in, uh, in in expenses over over the care, and so that they can prepare themselves financially. Right? You are yeah. when 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 you bring a a pet into your family, you know there's a responsibility that you that you need to have before. We think that those costs make sense, right? And and it's it's really worth it. We're not trying to scare anyone. A couple of times, you know, for, you know, people right. have asked me, "Well, are you trying to scare people from getting pets?" Absolutely not. It is it is it's the greatest thing to have a, a pet in your family, but we want you to be prepared before. And then on the other part of it, with with you know taking it from the veterinarian side, you know, we know that these are not easy costs to absorb. And so what yeah. care credit tries to do is pre, be able to provide solutions, whether it be the care credit card or whether it be pets best insurance, that allows pet parents to prepare for those expenses, whether expected or unexpected, and what we're hoping is that they are expected, in a in a in a meaningful manner, and so that uh, when something happens, they have that ability and the wherewithal to take care of that pet um, in the manner that it should be responsibly, and then also have great compliance to care because that's the other thing, and I, I'm sure you know, and and I heard some of your other podcasts that a, a, a pet that is taken to the vet more often is able to get their normal checkups and, and compliance of care is going to be a healthier pet and it's probably, you know, right. going to be a less um, expensive, uh, you know, pet to, you know, for lack of a better word, maintain over its lifetime. Yeah, I, th I think you hit on a controversial point. This is, but you and I are in the same camp here. Um, I wish these numbers weren't true. You know, I wish that it didn't cost twenty five to fifty five thousand dollars to have a dog, you know, or fifteen to to forty five thousand dollars to have a cat. Like I, I if I had a magic wand, I would make that not true. I would make it cost a thousand dollars over the lifetime of a pet. And and I would go ahead and wipe out vet veterinary student debt and pay the tax a living wage. Like I would do all those things. But but I think a lot of people say, you know, they look at these numbers and I've gotten pushed back on this because my my thought was for a long time, we should tell people it costs a thousand dollars a year to have a healthy dog. And people were like, what? Why would like that's just off putting? And I'm like, that's true. And like it, it, it's kind of like when when we go in the exam room and we make recommendations, if you don't tell people the truth then they can't make an educated decision. You know, if I don't say, hey, look, this is what it costs to treat heartworm disease, and this is the prevalence in our in our area, and your pet could die from heartworm disease, do they really have the information they need to decide whether or not they want to make that purchase? And people say that's, that's sort of hard, and I sort of say, well, um, I, 
I want to give them the truth and help them to make the best decision. And I think that that these numbers kind of fall into that same category of, I wish this wasn't the case. I wish I could tell you that that heartworms aren't going to hurt your dog and, um, you know, and that you can just give your dog some Benadryl for allergies and they'll be by- fine. But that's not true. And the same thing is to say to not set the expectation of this is what it costs. I, I don't think that's productive in the long term. When we talk about angry clients, you know, one of my favorite sayings is people don't get mad about what you give to them. They get mad about the difference between what they got and what they expected to get. And so I think that even just setting the expectations, if people expect, yep, I am making this commitment and yep, it's going to be expensive. Those conversations are a whole lot easier than then just being blissfully naive about what medicine costs. And they walk in with $300 and get their doors blown off. Yeah, I, I think it's it's important um, that we get through them in multiple channels, right? You know, obviously the veterinary profession is is going to be the one that I hate to say the word bears the burden of us, but but that's the truth because you you guys are the most trusted in the industry. Yeah, we we could you know publicize these stats and 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 go out there, but we're never going to reach you know the million uh, you know thirty million U.S. households is is a study what our study shows will will face an unexpected pet expense. There's no way we're going to get to them. So you guys on the front line are are, are the ones who are going to have to bear that. But it but it's also um it, it's it's the shelters that need to be you know kind of telling people, hey, you know, it's great that you're adopting this pet. We we love that you're taking it. But hey, with that comes a responsibility. Same thing with with breeders and and just, you know, the, the general industry as a whole. And and that's why we did our part to message this study. This isn't this isn't a commercial for care credit or pets fest. I, you know, it, it really it, it, we no, I, yeah. But you know, we, we would make it a lot more uh, you know, sexier and, and, you know, maybe we maybe yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe we would, uh, you know, have uh, Bruno Mars sing the results, but I think it, it, it's, it's, it, it's something that, you know, we want to get out there because, you know, we know that this is such a critical part of, uh, the industry and what we're trying to do at the end of the day is, yeah, sure. We're, 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 we're in the business of, of providing healthcare and financial financial solutions in the healthcare space, but you know what would be much better for everyone is if, if they know beforehand what they're getting into and are able to prepare for it in in a uh, orderly manner, so that they're not surprised and have to make tough decisions. Like, hey, if I do, I have to you know pay this bill or make my car payment. You know, we don't want anyone to be in that position. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. The first time you end up at the emergency clinic and it's fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, uh, you know that that's just they people's heads explode. They just they hadn't seen it coming. So so that brings us to to the actionable part of this. And I'm actually this this is what I really want to talk with you about. Um, what does a world look like where expectations like yeah. this are set? What is you know what do we do as medical professionals to try to bring this? Um, bring this awareness to pet owners? No, it, listen, it, 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 you have to hit people, hit people and own it. And don't hit anyone. This isn't the Oscars. Um, you, you, um, you need, you need to explain to people as much as possible. And, and, and it has to be multiple times, especially for yeah. those first time pet owners. I think, you know, we try as, as, as best as we can, uh, at, whether it be pet adoption or that first pet, you know, that first puppy visit with, with the vet to talk about, you know, that's a great place to talk about pet insurance, right? Because you're also yeah. getting the pet insurance at the, at the best time um, for, uh, for your, you know, for, 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 for your dog or cat, because that's when it's going to be the most um, cost efficient. It, there's not going to be pre-existing conditions and you'll, and you'll, you know, your, your premiums will, you'll get in at the right time, right? It's, it, that's just the way it works. The younger pet is going to be more affordable. And so, um, you know, that's one of the things where we at Pets Best try to uh, certainly get adoption. And, and I think I'd say across the industry in, in that space um, and, and in care credit also, you know, we try to make it easier as easy as we can, because we don't want you guys having a conversation. You're so busy as it is, right? So we we develop QR codes, we develop, you know, tags that say, hey, have this, we have educational videos. But at the end of the day, um, there's only so much that could be done virtually without without that human touch. And and you are the ones in the vet, uh, in, in the practice that are dealing with that, um, you know, that, you know, kind of stressed out, 
pet owner who is having to make that decision. And yes, there's 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 certainly a, a lot of education we can do before, and but I think ultimately there's only so much that you can do to um, prepare someone for what is uh, you know a, an unfortunate you know surprise when, when it comes to when it comes to costs. And if you think about it, you know. Uh, in the U.S., it's not like we're much better in human health, right? Uh, it, you know, people are not prepared for that. So I'd like to say, you know, it, it's something that's unique to the pet industry, but the truth is, it isn't, and it just makes it harder because pets don't speak and can't tell you how they feel, and so they can't. Your your guys are trying to translate two things to them, not just the cost, but how do we? How do you know that pet is feeling that way, and is this going to work or is this not going to work without being able to communicate verbally? Right. And well, and I, and I think that I think that you make a good point about the vet professionals bearing the brunt, because I, I would add to that and say the emotional brunt of like, I have to stand in the exam room and talk to the and talk to people about the hard decisions they're making and, and what things cost. And I don't like that, you know, and and, and my technicians don't want to don't want to bear that. There's an emotional toll, right? Especially when we talk about like, um, I don't call it a. Uh, uh, it's not convenience euthanasia, but financial euthanasia, things like that, where people, are, I mean, that that takes a toll on on me as well. And so things that we can do to to reduce that, um, the number of times I have those interactions, I'm all about that. I don't think that there's a magic, uh, you know, a magic formula that makes uh, financial conversations go away. I do think that there are things that we can do systematically that reduce the number of hard conversations that we have in the sort of multimodal approach. And I think that we should be looking at those things. When when I look at this, you know, I, I think that you're right too. I don't I don't know what a high level spreading of this message looks like. Like, is it the AVMA's place to to sort of say to people, hey, by the way, um, I, I don't I don't. I don't know that they would go for that. I don't think that's really the the image that they want to have. But but I do think it might help. But I mean, is it time to come up with a graceful way to talk about financial planning for your pet at the puppy visits? Should we have resources, you know, when new clients come in and just sort of say, hey, these are things that we mention to people and try to start to put forward right from the very beginning. And these can't be one time conversations. You know, the people people come in, they they've got a new puppy, a new kitten, they get they get out they get a whole folder, they get a whole truckload of information and it goes they don't retain ninety percent of it. It it needs to be a, a consistent message of, hey, this is important, hey, you need to be thinking about that. And I just I think that that's an area that we as a profession have to we have to work on. Like how how do we communicate that? What do we say? How do we talk about um how do we talk about in a way that normalizes the financial conversation around around veterinary medicine? Because you know, I love the reputation that veterinarians have and, and sort of the James Harriet culture that we have, but it's a double edged sword. And uh, you know, the downside to people saying, oh, the veterinarians, I, I love you guys. You have the biggest hearts. You're the kindest people, is that that can set us up to be the bad guy when we're not able to deliver what this person wants just because we love pets. And, and I think a lot of us see that of we we enjoy the benefits of that reputation, but then we also take a beating from it. Um, my my brother's a lawyer and no one's like, I can't believe that you charge for your services. Like he's a lawyer. They totally believe he charges for his services. And I'm not saying that we should be lawyers, but I do <laughs> no, think that no, we gotta like, no, no one's advocating that. But I, I do think that there is a middle path of saying we are we do care and we are compassionate and you need to be aware that this is the landscape that you deal in and that these are your that these are your options. Also, you know, if you're breaking the news about what medicine costs to a pet owner um, at the time that they need financial resources, that's a nightmare conversation. Uh, if they can get that message before they need it, then at least it's not new information. They come in going, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. That's that's a whole lot easier conversation than I can't believe that this is what the bill is. This is outrageous. Yeah, I think two answers on that. You know, on, on the on the languages and the do's and don'ts as it comes to financial, we did do something with the AVMA to train veterinarians and we do spend a lot of time because it isn't, first of all, it isn't a natural thing. They're not trained to... Uh, be in in a in a business yeah some of the office managers perhaps but they're doing something that they're passionate about and it is hard to kind of 
remove yourself and go back to the bottom line. So, so, you know, I'm empathetic to the veterinarian who is looking at that pet and, you know, trying to figure out any which way to get them that care, even at their personal expense. Now, with that said, the profession, as 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 you said, as much debt as people are in, and 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 uh, and as as much as we um, as much as we think that the cost of health of healthcare for our pets is high, it really probably isn't at the level where it should be, and that's where we as Care Credit, you know, want to be able to help. We want to take yeah. that conversation away by saying, okay, and and we we will serve as uh, you know to some degree. I don't want to say the bad guy in that space, but we, you know, we're the bank. That's what we're prepared to do. We're the one who's going to be able to lend the money, and and we're the ones that you know are able to have that harder conversation. Um, and 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 what we try to do is take that as much as we can that conversation away from the vet by some of these self service tools that we've developed. But also, you know, as a veterinarian, shouldn't be having you know receivables on their account from, you know. Dave Jones's, uh, you know, yeah. poodle, right? It, it should be. That's not. That's that's. No one wins with that, right? And and so um, that that's something that we got to as a profession kind of get away from because it it, it just doesn't make sense for anyone in, in the whole ecosystem. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, so I'm going to put a link to the survey in the show notes so everybody can see that. It's definitely it's a it's a it's very brief. It's well put together. You guys check it out. It, it's a lot of food for thought. Um, Jonathan. Where where else would you send people? So if some people are sort of sitting and processing this and they and they want to increase the financial education that they're able to provide to clients, things like that, what what resources would you point them to? Yeah, I think you know on on the carecredit.com site we have a lot of you know uh, learning and knowledge that 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 can talk about that, and I think that's something that uh, you will you will, you will get on that page. We have a special uh, page that talks about that and talks about, you know, the various expenses and, and costs that you have, you're going to put a link into the lifetime of care study so that, that people are prepared. We did a language of, of financial uh, expenses with, uh, with AVMA and, and those uh, tools are, are available as well. And, you know, I'd say if you're, if you're someone who um, already accepts care credit and wants to learn more, they, we have resources and training available for um, all our providers in that provider network and, and anything we can do in that space. Um, you know, costs are, are going up, right? In, in, in 2020, they said there was $104 billion spent in, in the pet industry in, in, in the U.S. Uh, 2021, I just saw came out at $123 billion. It's almost 20% yeah. up. It's, 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 going, it's going one direction, right? And whether it be, it, it's not just inflation, a lot of it is right. population. And, and, and that's great. And a lot of it is also people investing more in, in their pet, right? They've become, yeah. uh, become, you know, they are, you know, we talk about the humanization of pets, but people are treating them as at a different, um, you know, uh, level of, of, of treatment in that family than they did in the past. And so people, uh, it's great to see that, but with that costs go up and, and you're, and you're seeing that overall in, in our, in our, in our studies results. Yeah, exactly. And well, in the study, it says seven out of 10 pet owners consider the pets part of the family, to, just to your point. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'll put links to the to the survey uh, in the show notes. I'll also put links to Care Credit, and then I'll also pull up the language of financial expenses. Uh, that, I think that's a great resource. I'll link all that stuff in the show notes. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. Oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a delight. And that is our episode. Guys, I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you gave you something to think about. Um, I think this stuff is really important. And again, it feels icky sometimes to talk about the numbers and talk about what pets really cost. But guys, we got to be honest with people um, and they need to know what they're getting into. And so we need to start thinking about how to make pet owners more aware just so they know what they're signing up for. I think it's only fair. So guys, that's it. That's what I got. Thanks again to Care Credit for making this episode possible ad-free. Guys, take care of yourselves. Talk to you later on. Bye.